love liminal spaces. It's like seeing the skeleton of the world, the backstage of life, where the set is empty and the actors are gone. All right, I'm not gonna drag this out anymore. You know what this video is, you saw the title. I'm excited for this because I love how these like images give you like uh, nostalgia and comfort, it's, it's awesome. So let's get into this iceberg where the further we go down, the more obscure the entries will get. All right, let's go. Layer one is called The Valley. Also guys, really quick, follow my Instagram and join my Discord. Both are linked in the description. Also, only like 1% of you guys are subscribed and we gotta change that. So go subscribe or else I will release spiders into your home. The Backrooms. The Backrooms is a concept that became popular a few years ago and has blown up obviously. <laughs> Basically, it's this idea that there's another dimension of, quote, levels that exist outside our plane of existence. There are basically infinite of these levels, and they can range from all sorts of things. What you're seeing are just a few examples. The most popular level, though, just happens to be the next entry on this iceberg. The lobby is what this iceberg is calling level zero of the backrooms. This is the one that started the backrooms completely, and... Hey, it's pretty good. It's this old yellow office that stretches on for millions of miles of just randomly generated rooms. There's no guarantee of escape here either, like there's just a hope that there might be a door that could take you to level 1. This is pretty classic. Places where reality seems altered. Yo, this image is basically a mood board for that altered reality vibe that liminal spaces give off. We've got four different pictures here, each one a classic spot where the vibe shifts when there is nobody around. First up, schools at night. Man, schools at night are just eerie as hell. During the day, they're buzzing with noise and life, but at night, they're these empty, silent halls that feel like they're straight out of a ghost story. It's like every sound is amplified and every shadow could be something lurking. Then there's leaving the movie theater late. You know the drill, you walk out after the late show and the place is deserted. The marquee lights are shining like the last bit of life in the place. It feels like you've stepped out of one story into another, like right into a scene of some kind of a noir flick where time is just standing still. Down to empty beaches early in the morning. Beaches are supposed to be like all sunny and full of people, but when they're empty, they've got this really peaceful yet kind of melancholic thing going on. The empty sand and the quiet waves hit different when you're the only one around. It's beautiful, but also gives you that feeling of being somewhere you shouldn't be. Like the world is on pause. And finally, traffic lights when there are no cars around late at night. Bro, this one is super surreal. Like traffic lights cycling through their colors when no one is around to see them. It, it feels like a scene from a post-apocalyptic movie. It's this reminder of like human absence, like the lights are performing for an empty stage and they would keep performing even though there's nobody around. Altogether, this image is like a love letter to those weird out of time moments where places that are so usually familiar turn into something else entirely. It's liminality captured into four snapshots. Each one saying, what the hell, <laughs> where did everybody go? And leaving you with that really eerie, nostalgic, kind of lost feeling. Amazing stuff, really. The front rooms is another back rooms related thing. But just like how front is the opposite of back, the front rooms are the complete opposite of the back rooms. That's a really dumb analogy. I don't know why I wrote that in my script, bro. <laughs> the front rooms are just, well, look around you. That's the front rooms. The front rooms is anywhere in existence that's not in the back rooms, aka anywhere in our existence. 154 Freston Road is a location that's most famous for being one of the filming locations for Rick Astley's Never Gonna Give You Up. You know, the Rick Roll song. But this location without the music, without Rick, is really empty and eerie. It's awesome and definitely liminal. It's nostalgic for like movies about old cities, you know? Abandoned buildings. Okay, so abandoned buildings, right? <laughs> They're like the bread and butter of all liminal space images. It's all about the feels these places give off. Like they've got stories to tell, but no one's left to hear them. When you see an abandoned building, it's like looking at a snapshot where time got up and walked out the door. These places are stuck in this weird limbo where they're not being used for their original purpose anymore, but they're not gone either. They're just there, kind of frozen. The thing with abandoned buildings is they hit that eerie, melancholic note just right. They're these shells of the past, full of all the life that used to be. When you're in them, or just looking pictures at them, there's this silence that's loud, you know? It's like the walls are whispering about all the stuff that went down before everything went to hell. Kind of like, um, uh, bending the ink machine. And visually, they're super striking. Peeling paint, broken windows, nature kind of reclaiming the space is hauntingly beautiful in a way that's kind of hard to shake. They're like the ultimate symbol of what liminal spaces are all about. Transition, the in-between, the not quite here or there. 
And also, okay, these buildings, man, they make you think about all the people who once filled them. That's like the thing about them. And now it's just echoes. It's a trip to think about how a place full of energy can become so empty and still. It's like a pause button on life. And all that's left is this vibe of what used to be hanging in the air. Absolutely wild. Abbey Road is an album by the Beatles and the art for it is pretty classic. But then when you take away the actual people from the image, it can be kind of liminal. I don't know, bro. Beatles are hella overrated anyways, but... Aesthetic liminality links to this image of what looks like a Japanese or Chinese facility. This stuff is really eerie to me. Facilities and stuff really like get to me. I think it comes from games like Portal because that kind of video game was like a big introduction into liminality for me personally. Animoya. Animoya is a word that means basically nostalgia, but for a time or place you've never experienced. Like a dumbed down version would be like watching Stranger Things or something like that, right? Like a TV show or movie that's set in the 80s and then being nostalgic for that time, even though Let's be honest, if you're watching this video, you're probably Gen Z. This concept is very apparent in liminal spaces though, definitely. Like with that last image. I've never been in an Asian facility like that, but it's still nostalgic for some reason. Animoyaopolis is a video game whose name is a play on the word Animoya we just talked about. It's this awesome game where you explore liminal spaces and stuff, and it's honestly probably the gameplay that I'm gonna put over the script. It's really, really well made and definitely worth a play if you have the time. Supporting the creator is definitely the right move. Apocalypse. Apocalypse is an image that's classified as classical liminal, which is my favorite kind. This room is so nostalgic and eerie, and then the window just showing this end of the world amount of like fire gives it a weird edge. Not my favorite image, but I do love the classic liminality at play here. Arcades. Arcades have become a really popular location for liminal space photography, I think because of the nostalgia and the animoia. Like these locations, these arcades are synonymous with childhood fun, innocence, and a lack of responsibility. And that's what these liminal spaces are all about, wishing for a time gone by. And when these places are left just empty, it's eerie and comforting. You know what I mean? Bingo Hall. This one is a classic. I know it's one of the most outvoted liminal space photos on the subreddit. Just repeating booths for as far as you can see. Empty. Spooky. Bliss. Ooh, anyone who grew up with a Windows computer before like 2015 knows about this. Apparently this is a real photograph. It's not like photoshopped or anything. I didn't believe it at first either, <laughs> but yeah, bruh. Blockbuster. Oh my gosh, this one is breathtaking. I never saw this image before researching this video. This is beautiful. I remember going to stores like this and blockbusters and stuff as a kid when everything was like simple. Maybe taking childhood places of comfort and fun and making them empty is symbolic of how we've grown up. And that's what the comfort is. And seeing an image that relates to our despair and trauma of losing that simplicity and innocence. I don't know, man. I'm just, I'm just spitballing here. <laughs> chairs, 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 chairs. Darkness. Many liminal spaces are taken in the dark. Spooky. Elegiac auras. This is a popular liminal space Twitter account. Fun. Flooded subway station. Ooh, this is another classic. Something about it being underground makes it even more interesting and beautiful. Spooky, like there's no escape, you know? The tightness of the tunnel makes it feel even like claustrophobic and the water is interesting. It makes it a little different, it's nostalgic. I used to swim for sport when I was a kid, you know, maybe this is like activating that a little bit for me. Google Pixel wallpapers. These are really beautiful and liminal. The blurriness, especially this one to me, the city vibe is just really nostalgic and anamoyic to me. Like, I remember, like, every time I go to a big city, like, ever, it's just, like, so, like, just, like, it's not nostalgic for me because I never, I grew up, like, in the country, right? But I guess it's, like, anamoyic. Hallways. Hallways are very commonly used in liminal space images since, well, by definition, they are liminal. Liminal technically means transitional. And I don't like that definition of liminal spaces, actually, though, because I think a lot of liminal spaces today aren't necessarily only transitional maybe metaphorically, but hallways are used a lot. I think now because they're just really like bare and basic usually, so they're like usually empty, which is a hallmark of liminality today. Houses on hills slash motion. Okay, this is another classic one. This is a level of the back rooms, and this is also associated with dreamcore, weirdcore type stuff, which I do like quite a bit. <laughs> This image doesn't really do it for me though, personally, but here it is for you. I Spy. I Spy is a series of kids books of just like huge places full of stuff and you gotta find certain stuff. It's like Where's a Waldo, I guess, and I guess some people find liminality in these, particularly this one. Cool. Jared Pike. 
According to his website, Jared Pike is a New York City-based designer and artist who creates imaginary liminal interiors and dreamscapes. These are awesome. And you've almost definitely seen one of his pieces, if not a bunch. So yeah, this is where all these classic pool rooms images comes from. Cane Pixels. Cane Pixels, my nemesis. No, I'm just kidding. Cane Pixels is the creator of the Backroom series that made the Backrooms popular. But I'm sure you already know that. And don't worry guys, in this video, I won't go on my usual spiel about how Kane Pixels misunderstood the back room. The allure of the back rooms is the loneliness. You're stuck somewhere that you can't escape. There's lingering fear of the unknown. There could be something out there, but who knows if you'd ever encounter it. It could be years after you've arrived. That's the fear. It comes from the liminality. Kane Pixels said, oh, just throw a monster in there for fun. To be clear, I have nothing actually against Kane Pixels. He's way more talented than me with this stuff. So, I mean, I definitely couldn't make a series out of this. I would have no idea where to start. And this is all a joke. This is all a joke. That's just my critique, but you know. Lack of people. A main characteristic of 99.9% .9 of liminal space photos and 100% of good liminal space photos is that they lack people entirely. Traces of people, sure. But any actual people, no. It makes it feel more empty, eerie, nostalgic, and liminal. Having anybody in a liminal space picture would make it like too familiar, you know? Laundry room view. Oh my gosh, I've been seeing this image until writing the script, but this has got to be one of my favorite liminal space images. Something about this open school with all these buildings and a complete lack of people is so despairing to me and depressing, but comforting in that. How open it is, the lack of shadows, this, this is beautiful. Liminal Archives. Okay, let me just read straight from the website. Welcome to Liminal Archives, the primary global database of the strange and uncanny locations that blur the line between real and unreal. The archivists are the brave souls who venture into the unknown, risking death or worse, to study liminality. Observe how liminal spaces operate and gather data to bring it back and add to the archives. This is a really, really awesome site and community full of people who are actually passionate about liminality, more than just sharing Gmod photos on Reddit. Nothing against that at all, that's where I'm at personally, but it's so cool to see people really actually interested in the concept of liminality and are like dedicated to it. Liminal space and aesthetic. Okay, I'm not sure why this is so low on the iceberg, or on the iceberg at all, because this is literally just, what is a liminal space? Again, for this though, I will just read straight from the aesthetics wiki. The aesthetic known as liminal space is a location which is a transition between two other spaces or states of being. Typically, these are abandoned and oftentimes empty, a mall at 4 a.m. or a school hallway during summer, for example. This makes it feel frozen and slightly unsettling, but also familiar to our minds. Liminal space image compilations. This one kind of explains itself. Liminal space image compilations are just videos that compile a bunch of liminal space photos, usually with liminal-esque music behind it. I love these. These are how I got into liminal spaces in the first place. I saw one that was something along the lines of like places you've seen in your dreams or whatever and the rest is history now i love liminal spaces liminal space related fears there are a lot of fears related to liminal spaces. Some good examples are autophobia, which literally translates to self-fear, but it's really a fear of being alone, and mesophobia, which is a fear of getting lost. This is really interesting since I think fear plays a big part in the feeling you get from liminal spaces. Fears come from trauma, and we get a feeling of comfort from experiencing our fears in an environment that we can control. This logic carries over to liminal spaces, I think, as well. Lurking danger. Lurking danger is apparently level 1 of the back rooms, which is the level you would get to if you traverse level 0 long enough and eventually find an exit. I'll read from the wiki now. Level 1 is a large, sprawling warehouse that features concrete floors and walls, exposed rebar, and a low-hanging fog with no discernible source. The fog often coalesces into condensation, forming puddles on the floor in inconsistent areas. Unlike level 0, this level possesses a consistent supply of water and electricity, which allows indefinite habitation by wanderers, providing that appropriate precautions are taken. It is also far more expansive, possessing staircases, elevators, isolated rooms, and hallways. There is a lot more info about this level, so go research that if you want, but this is a liminal space iceberg, not a backrooms iceberg, even though that is coming, guys, so be on the lookout. But I won't go super in-depth here. Malls. Malls are really, really common liminal spaces. They're also some of my favorite liminal spaces. Malls are something that I think we associate with joy, fun times, etc., especially in the terms of nostalgia, because I don't know about you, but I remember going to the mall with my family a bunch as a kid. It reminds me of like Christmas too, because of certain Christmas movies, and I don't know, I have a lot of nostalgia for the mall. So then take away all the people and all the lights and make it a liminal space, and bro, it's so powerful. Okay, this uh, this is, uh, 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 here's the question of the day, guys. 
What is y'all's favorite mall store? Let me know down in the comments. Meek Dailed. Meek Dailed is a channel that posts a bunch of liminal space compilations. This is probably where a lot of you guys got into liminal spaces. Me channel. Uh, I, I guess to some people, the me channel when it's empty and void of any me's is pretty liminal. Yeah, maybe. Minecraft. A lot of liminal spaces have been made in Minecraft. And honestly, Minecraft itself can be a liminal space. I think so anyways. I made a whole video on it, go check it out. The iceberg link to this image for the Minecraft entry, which yeah, this is liminal, but there are a lot better ones in my opinion also. Like look at some of these. My swimsuit still dripping water. This liminal space is crazy. This hits me so hard, bro. Hotels are already so nostalgic just in general. And then this hallway in particular is just, I don't know, oh my gosh, bro. Hallways and hotels are so liminal. This message to my swimsuit still dripping water is so like relatable and nostalgic and real. Imagine the smell, a generic hotel smell and chlorine mixed together, bro. Nostalgia. Um, yeah, nostalgia is a very cool part of liminal spaces, I guess. Pink Fever Dream. Okay, the original image here for Pink Fever Dream has been deleted, but this guy in the comments linked his Minecraft recreation of it. So shout out to you slash flappy cows, bruh. Playgrounds. Playgrounds are used in liminal spaces a lot. Probably, I would think, because of the nostalgia and innocence associated with them. Playgrounds are a place where memories of childhood and just pure innocence come back. Where the most stressful, annoying thing in your life is just some kid stealing one of your little Debbie muffins. And yeah, liminal spaces can really well capture this feeling. Pool rooms. Pool rooms are actually a super, super cool little sub-niche or subset of liminal spaces that first gained popularity and notoriety from the back rooms. A lot of the popular images of liminal spaces or back rooms are of these pool rooms, but they are really popular for a reason. They're a really interesting and different type of liminal space. I think that since nostalgia is such a huge part of liminality, these pool rooms bring back memories of innocence and childhood since I feel like a lot of people spend a bunch of time at the pool when they were a kid. r slash liminal reality. r slash liminal reality from what I can tell is just a subreddit for sharing and posting and discussing liminal spaces. They're all pretty cool here. r slash liminal space. r slash liminal space is the much bigger subreddit also for sharing liminal spaces with over 600,000 members. This one is like a lot more popular. Also guys I feel like my my chains are getting are getting in the recording a bunch so I apologize. That. Rock bottom SpongeBob. Okay, so there's this episode of SpongeBob, right? All the way from season one, where SpongeBob and Patrick board a bus in order to get home from Glove World, a glove themed amusement park that they love. They accidentally board the wrong bus, which then takes them to a cliff. The cliff leads to some sort of aphotic zone called Rock Bottom, inhabited by multiple strange deep sea animals. Patrick gets on the bus to go home but accidentally leaves Spongebob behind. After several unsuccessful attempts to get on the bus, Spongebob heads to the bus station and waits in a very long line. By the time he gets to the front, he finds out that the last bus to leave for the night is already gone and he's stuck there until morning. And yeah, this Rock Bottom place is really liminal and really creepy. Just super like empty, you know? Looks like a level of the back rooms. Sanatorium Ingle. Sanatorium Ingle is apparently the name of this super popular and famous liminal space slash back rooms level thing that you have definitely seen before. I love this image, but I never knew it was called Santa Nor San Sanatorium Ingle. Like Ingles, bro? Like the grocery store, bro? Is that a national thing? Wait, hold up. Okay, so Ingles is only in the southeast, apparently. So you guys might not even know what Ingles is. <laughs> okay, anyways, that's not important. <laughs> Shuki. Okay, so Shuki is this YouTuber who just makes videos about liminal spaces. This is pretty sick. If you see this, bro, hit me up. Let's collab. No, but he mostly just talks about like specific liminal spaces, makes compilations, and really just does a whole like variety show of liminal space stuff. Like he has one video called Us. <laughs> I read Us. Bro. I wrote US in the script. <laughs> called US Presidents Discuss Liminal Spaces and a bunch of stuff about like Breaking Bad, bro. <laughs> Solar Sands. Solar Sands is a YouTuber that talks about basically just a bunch of art in these really long video essay type videos like Spongebob, Philosophobia, and Diary of a Wimpy Kid. He's actually really unique and it's kind of hard to explain what he does exactly. Like just listen to some of these video titles. What is the most soothing sound? The secret darker art of Dr. Seuss. Oh, and wait, you can't forget Journeys to Hell. <laughs> Solar Sands, you should uh, hit me up too, low-key, let me get a sec. Stairs. Stairs are really common in liminal spaces, and yes, I love them. In liminal spaces, they really add this element of transition and stuff. Like, a hallway, but, but also more eerie usually. When done right, at least. They hit harder than hallways for me, personally. Especially because I kind of associate them with darkness. Like, my childhood nostalgia associates stairs either with going down to the creepy dark basement, 
or going upstairs at night to go to sleep at the end of the day, and therefore going to be alone. Stock images. Stock images can often be really liminal and have that nostalgic vibe, probably because of just how basic and bare bones they are. Nothing. Usually no people, just literal stock media. It's made to be empty. Super Mario 64. Okay, so Super Mario 64 is on this iceberg, but the link here links to a video that has been removed or something because I can't watch it. So I'm just gonna assume it's talking about how liminal and empty Super Mario 64 can be. This game was made right in the birth of 3D stuff, like this becoming a norm, and they hadn't fully figured it out yet. So a lot of the spaces, places, buildings, settings, etc. were just kind of empty, you know? With repeating textures and stuff that really brings that liminal vibe. Super Liminal. Super Liminal, previously Museum of Simulation Technology, is a 2019 puzzle video game released by Pillow Castle. The game, played from a first-person perspective, incorporates gameplay elements around optical illusions and forced perspective. Notably, certain objects when picked up can be moved towards or away from the player, but when placed back down, they scale to the size as the player had viewed them, enabling the player to solve puzzles to complete the game. Terminal for Holiday Inn Express Also known as the Courtyard of Windows, this is an image of a seemingly enclosed area of an inn with multiple windows. This one, bro, just wow. So popular and famous, but still, like, popular for a reason. Is that one COVID-19 testing area waiting room? This one honestly never got me that much. Something about it just seems too like, I don't know. To me, it feels like a picture I would take when I'm somewhere and I'm like, oh my God, this would be so liminal, bro. And then I look at the picture later and it just looks like a bad iPhone picture that doesn't look good. <laughs> but that's just me, nothing against the artist who took this. The Caretaker. The Caretaker is a musical artist that made the really cool and really famous album, Everything at the End of Time, which in short, is an album that was made to symbolize and basically express the process of falling into dementia. And yeah, a lot of Liminal Space compilations and stuff use this guy's music for background music. Which yeah, makes a lot of sense because of how nostalgic and eerie it is. The End The End is a level of the back rooms that's a library with signs that tell you this is the end. It's said to be a trap level that tricks someone into thinking they've escaped the back rooms, but they really haven't. The images came from a Borders during its liquidation sale. And I just googled it and apparently Borders is like some Barnes & Noble type bookstore or something. The Living Room the living room is a super famous liminal space. It's a photograph of an empty looking house with a dark hallway, stairway, and a white room bathed in blue light. This one is also my other weirdcore iceberg because of how many weirdcore edits use this same image. I mean, this one's also kind of famous for a reason, definitely, but it's also kind of overexposed and this overexposure does ruin it for me just a little bit. The Mandela Catalog. I am sure you've heard of this analog horror web series. It's super famous. A lot of the shots and places in this series and a lot of analog horror in general are very liminal. Like look at Mark's back hallway, bro. Just some super normal places, but made liminal and eerie because of the context and also the presentation is just really, really good and well done. The Oval Office Between US Presidents. Ooh, this image is interesting. I feel like I've seen it, but I also don't really remember it. This is like old-timey liminal. It looks like it's of a place from like the early 1900s to the late 1800s or something. Something about the light under the door is crazy and the hidden door on the side, ah, uh, this image is pretty sick, bro. The puffer test. Okay, so for background, according to orlandvision.com, a puffer test is what it sounds like. With your head resting in the chin rest of a diagnostic machine called a slit lamp, your eye doctor uses a puff of air across the surface of the eye to measure the intraocular pressure or the inside pressure of the eye and so there's this liminal space that takes like that concept and makes it a liminal space pretty much pretty cool huh this is more like weird core dream core almost is what it feels like to me but maybe i'm wrong the stanley parable oh my gosh this is actually one of my favorite games ever bro i am so glad that it's here i should low-key stream this sometime okay so the stanley parable is a unique video game that's more about exploring and making choices than traditional gameplay like fighting or scoring points. The game follows Stanley, an office worker who realizes one day that all of his coworkers are gone. A narrator guides Stanley and through him the player by telling him what he should do next. But the twist is that players can choose to follow the narrator's instructions or do something entirely different. Each choice leads to a different story or ending. There are no right or wrong choices, just different paths and outcomes. It's like a storybook where you can pick different paths for the main character. The game's setting, Stanley's office, is a really good example of liminal space. In the Stanley Parable, these spaces add to the game's strange, surreal feeling. The office seems familiar, but also weirdly empty and quiet, which makes the player feel curious and a bit uneasy, just like in stories about liminal spaces. And I don't know yet, because right now I'm just writing the script, but I definitely might make this the game like this that I'm playing in the background of this iceberg. The Truman Show. 
The Truman Show, without spoiling too much, because I really don't want to spoil too much for this movie, has the basic idea that this guy is living in a world that isn't real. Basically, he's been selected since birth for a 24-7 reality TV show where hidden cameras are constantly watching him in this like limbo world. And then a lot of the shots in the movie because of this, especially this famous one of the stairs with the sky painted onto the wall and the water and stuff, are seen as like really liminal. And yet this definitely is very liminal. This kind of reminds me of another one of my favorite video games ever, Machinarium. A lot of the shots and art from that game are so liminal and the whole game is so beautiful. Torque Rainbow Funhouse. Whoa, this is a gold mine of liminality. Also, I think it's really funny the title of the article that this iceberg links to is, quote, <laughs> how the legendary Rainbow Funhouse ended up being the place that stank of Wii. <laughs> like, that's all it's known for anymore. But anyways, this place is like an old funhouse for kids that shut down. Something about this place looks so much more claustrophobic than most funhouses or places like that for kids. This is like everything amazing about liminality to me. It's so innocent and nostalgic, but claustrophobic and empty and eerie. Like the colorfulness juxtaposed with how empty and barren it is is so powerful. Toys R Us. Whoa, this is another absolutely amazing liminal space. It looks like it's in a mall or something. And again, the colorfulness looks like it should have a bunch of people and kids around, but it's just empty. Also, I love how you can see inside a little bit to see how empty it is inside. Washington Square Mall. Washington Square Mall is the location that this specific, really famous liminal space was taken. But there is also so much more gold in this mall. I want to visit here so bad, bro. Like, what the hell? Look at all of these. I can just keep going with all these images, bro. This is awesome. I want to go here. Yo, Poi meet up at the Washington Square mall one day yeah your last stop your last stop is the name of this liminal space image that is also pretty famous this one doesn't get me personally that much but it does remind me of that one movie i'm thinking of ending things which is an amazing movie for fans of liminality and real poi fans know because my first ever video i ever made was about that movie also guys i'm kind of sick right now so i'm sorry if you can like hear that in my voice a little bit but that's my bad kefi coffee commercials this commercial is just a really peaceful little ride through a really liminal and beautiful countryside with some nice hills. This is really nice and beautiful. Whoa, guys, we just finished layer one of this iceberg. How awesome is that? Let's get into the next layer, which is called the grocery store. I feel fantastic room. Okay, so there's this video called I feel fantastic. This kind of creepy and super like uncanny valley-esque of an android named Tara singing a song. This video was just a man who was into robotics and made a video about his robot to like showcase it for a contest or whatever. But the room here is super liminal and weird quarry. Ah Pools. Ah Pools is this liminal space image that has been around for quite a while, given the history of liminal spaces as an aesthetic. It was posted three years ago. Wow. I'm just saying all this because the actual picture doesn't give me that much. I don't know, maybe I'm weird. I also just don't know if this is like a real picture or a blender rendering or something. I, I don't know, man, I'm kind of dumb. Bo Burnham Inside. Okay, so Bo Burnham is a comedian who does like ironic dark humor, right? He's like the entry level dark humor comedian so he's really not all that funny in my opinion but anyways he has a netflix special where during the pandemic he recorded a bunch of comedy skits but they were all just like alone because of the lockdown and stuff and the whole movie is kind of dark and sad in a way and obviously since it's empty a lot of the scenes and stuff can be seen as pretty liminal bounce houses Bounce houses are a huge potential for liminality. By their nature, bounce houses are claustrophobic, nostalgic, and super playful. So when they're empty, they really check all the boxes for liminality. It's pretty amazing. I remember I used to go to one when I was a kid a bunch. Like, we had one in our local town or whatever. These get me so much. That's why I'm, like, talking so passionately right now. <laughs> Brooklyn Nine-Nine. This entry is referring to this specific picture of the set of Brooklyn Nine-Nine after filming its last season. And yeah, this is super liminal. It reminds me of school at the end of the year when all the tables and desks and stuff are all put up and it's just empty. Emptiness. Super cool. I really love it. Casting couch. I'm, I'm gonna skip over this one. Deja vu area. Wait, yo, is this an Olivia Rodrigo reference? I'm actually listening to her right now as I'm recording this. Wait, let me put my headphones up to the microphone. Hold on. Can you hear this? Can you hear that? I'm listening to Olivia Rodrigo right now because she's kind of gasped, bro. I'm be real. All right, <laughs> let's, let's move on. <laughs> Anyways, okay, deja vu area. This one, I, I love this image. This image is of a window in what looks like an industrial factory or something with a sign on it that says deja vu area. This is your first time here. If this platform feels familiar, immediately alert an MTA employee. If you see something, say something. This really reminds me of Portal and Portal 2, especially like those back rooms from Portal 2 where you go back and see what the laboratories used to be like, you know? Edward Hopper. Okay, so Edward Hopper, right? He's this famous painter known for his like super moody, 
and atmospheric works. And when you talk about liminal spaces, Hopper's painting Rooms by the Sea is like a textbook example. Rooms by the Sea is this painting that shows an interior room opening directly onto the sea. Like there's no beach, just a door and then bam, ocean. It's kind of surreal. The room's all empty with this like stark light pouring in from the open door. It's got this vibe of isolation, like you're in this in-between space that's not here or there. Hopper's really good at capturing these moments of solitude and introspection. In Rooms by the Sea, there's this sense of being in a transitional space. It's not just a room, it's like a gateway to somewhere else, but also like kind of trapped in its own stillness. You get this feeling of waiting for something to happen, but nothing ever does. The way he uses light and shadow creates this eerie, almost haunting atmosphere. It's like the room is familiar, but also super alienating. It's a classic liminal space, a place stuck between reality and some other more mysterious world. Hopper nails that feeling of being alone in a place that should be familiar, but just feels off. Super intriguing and kind of melancholy, you know? Edward Scissorhands. So Edward Scissorhands is this like classic movie, right? It's basically the epitome of Tim Burton style. But the thing that's really wild about this movie is how it totally nails the whole liminal space vibe. Like you've got Edward, this super out of place dude with, you know, scissors for hands, which is already a little out there. And he's stuck in this super surreal, pastel colored suburbia. It's like the contrast between Edward's dark gothness and the cookie cutter suburban houses is just like chef's kiss for liminality. The suburbs are meant to be this perfect idyllic place, but they feel so empty and eerie, especially with Edward just kind of there, not fitting in. And don't even get me started on the castle. It's this empty, massive, spooky place. It's like a character in the movie itself. The whole movie is like walking through a dream where nothing feels quite right, but it's also super familiar, you know? Totally gives those like liminal space vibes. Five Nights at Freddy's. All right, so Five Nights at Freddy's, right? It's this horror game that's like pretty popular, if you didn't know. <laughs> the whole vibe is set in this creepy old pizza place. Think Chuck E. Cheese, but like if it was haunted. It's got these animatronic characters that are supposed to be all fun and games during the day, but at night they turn into nightmare fuel monsters. The game totally nails the liminal space aesthetic. Like you're in the security room and everything's quiet and eerie. It's that feeling of being somewhere you're not supposed to be at night. You know, like where everything feels off and uncanny. The empty halls, the dim lights, the weird sounds. It's like being stuck in a place between normal and like completely wrong. <laughs> Plus the whole game plays with the idea of being watched. Those animatronics, they just pop up out of nowhere, staring through the camera gives you chills. It's all about that feeling of isolation, being trapped in this liminal space where things are familiar but just so wrong. Totally fits into that weird core liminal space aesthetic. Super creepy, but in a cool way. Fortnite. <laughs> okay, so Fortnite, right? It's this massive online game where everyone's like building stuff and shooting at each other. But here's the thing. When you look at it through the lens of liminal spaces, especially in those closed areas, not the main game part, it gets kind of trippy. So in Fortnite, there are these moments, right, where you're not in the middle of all the chaos and you find yourself in these empty buildings or abandoned spots on the map. It's super eerie, like one second everything's all action-packed and the next you're in this silent, deserted house or some weird, closed-off area. It's got this vibe of a place that's meant to be full of life, but, you know, just empty. These spots hit different because they feel so out of place in a game that's usually so loud and busy. It's like stepping into a parallel world where everything is paused. The rooms with half-built structures and lonely landscapes, they're like snapshots of a world that's stuck between being real and just a game. But the thing is, these areas make you feel kind of isolated, you know? Like you're the only person in this huge, strange world. It's that liminal space feeling of being somewhere familiar, but also totally alien. Totally nails that weird and settling vibe that's just so fascinating about liminal spaces. It's like Fortnite's got its own hidden layer of weirdness, tucked away from the main game. Super cool and kind of spooky at the same time. Gary's Mod. Oh man, Gary's Mod, right? This game is like the king of creating liminal spaces. It's not even a game in the traditional sense, it's more like this wild sandbox where you can do pretty much anything. The thing about Gary's Mod is that it's all about the environments you create or explore. You can end up in these super weird, empty maps that feel like they should be bustling with activity, but are just not. Like you've got these spaces that are meant to be full of life, like schools or offices, but they're totally deserted. It's that eerie, uncanny feeling like something's off. And since you can spawn anything, anywhere, it gets even more surreal. Imagine a deserted hospital with like a random couch in the middle of the hallway. It's like each map is a weird blend of familiar and bizarre. You're in this place that's kind of recognizable, but also feels like a dream or something. And also I want to talk about just the, the, like the maps, right? Like a lot of the base maps that come with the game, you know? Like GM Construct is still probably like my favorite liminal space ever, like in existence ever. It's so just like nostalgic and real and just like, just the grass in the sky, I don't know. Like, I mean, if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. Anyways, 
Gary's Mod is like a playground for liminality. It's the epitome of being in between, like you're in a place that's real and imaginary. It's all about that feeling of being somewhere you're not supposed to be, or somewhere that doesn't make quite sense. Super cool and kind of trippy. Yo, shout out my biology professor for that one. <laughs> my biology professor is always saying like, oh, that's trippy, bro. And he, I mean, he, he's a cool guy, but I think it's just funny. <laughs> Gringy City. I could have just pronounced that entirely wrong. I don't know. I don't play Pokemon. I just researched it for this video. <laughs> Grangy City. I'm just gonna go with Gringy City. This place is like a prime example of the middle spaces in the Pokemon world. It's this industrial city, all grimy and polluted, which is a total shift from the usual bright and lively vibe of most Pokemon places. So in the context of liminal spaces, Gringy City feels like it's caught between two worlds. On one side, you've got the typical Pokemon towns, all cheerful and full of life. And then there's Grinchy City, which is just so out of place with this gloomy atmosphere. It's like a forgotten corner in the Pokemon universe where the usual rules don't really apply. The whole vibe of the city is super like uncanny. It's industrial and dirty, which is kind of the opposite of what you'd expect in a world filled with magical creatures that you kidnap to be your slave. It's like stepping into a parallel universe where everything's just a bit off. The city's emptiness adds to that feeling of being in a liminal space, a place that exists on the fringes, kind of like neglected and stuck in its own bubble. The power plant is like the heart of the city's liminality. It's this massive abandoned structure full of electric type Pokemon. It's a place that once had a purpose, but now is just this eerie, quiet place that feels familiar and alien. Grocery store. There's this Reddit post called, let me get some, uh, and the post is of a picture of an empty grocery store. This one gets me so hard. I can't even describe it. This one just gets me, I don't know, shoddy, just look at it. Hillside Intermediate. So this is where this super famous liminal space image was taken. It's a place called Hillside Intermediate in Bridgewater, New Jersey. So, so I low-key used to love this image, but now that I know it's in that state. What's the catch? Oh, no catch. Although we are technically in New Jersey. Not one place even remotely livable. Hotel Mario. Hotel Mario, yeah. That game's like a weird offbeat chapter in Mario's history. It's all about Mario going through these hotels, but the vibe is super different from the usual Mario games. The thing with Hotel Mario is the setting. You've got these hotels that Mario's gotta navigate and they're kind of surreal. Each hotel feels like it's stuck in this weird in-between state. It's not the vibrant mushroom kingdom we're all used to and it's not completely alien either. It's like this bizarre middle ground. Each level in the hotels has this empty, eerie quality to it. Usually Mario levels are all lively with like loads of enemies and obstacles and stuff, but in Hotel Mario, the levels can feel strangely deserted, which gives off this liminal space vibe. It's like you're stuck in a familiar place, but it's just off. The levels are also kind of like repetitive, which adds to that feeling of being stuck in a loop somewhere between start and finish. And the gameplay is all about opening and closing doors, which is kind of symbolic, right? Doors are like the ultimate liminal space thing. They're the literal threshold between one place and another. So Mario's just there opening and closing doors stuck in this loop in these weird surreal hotels. Kenopsia. Okay, so Kenopsia, right? This word's all about that deep, eerie feeling you get in places that are usually bustling with people but are now abandoned and silent. It's like walking into a mall after hours or an empty school during summer break. Just gives you chills, you know? The thing with Kenopsia is it's not just about being in a quiet place. It's that weird, unsettling vibe you get because you know these spaces should be full of life, but they're just not. It's like the air's thick with all the energy that's supposed to be there, but what you get is this haunting silence. Imagine being in an amusement park with no one around. During the day, it's all screams and laughter, but at night, it's just the sound of the wind and maybe a creaky ride swaying. That's Canopsia. It's like the place is holding its breath, waiting for the people to come back. And it's not just eerie, it's kind of sad too. Like, you can almost feel the echoes of the activity and the noise that used to be there. It's a powerful vibe because it's so out of the ordinary. We're so used to these places being so full of energy, so when they're empty, it's like, what the hell, it misses with your head. The liminal space edits. So these are like photos or images that have been tweaked to give off that strong liminal space vibe. It's all about turning ordinary photos into something that feels a bit off and a bit eerie. The trick with these edits is in the details. Editors might mess with the colors, make them more muted or kind of surreal, or they'll tweak the lighting to make it feel unnatural, like too bright in one spot or too dark in another. It's all about creating that feeling of an in-between space, somewhere that's familiar but also kind of unsettling. Some edits go for the empty, abandoned look. Think like an office with all the furniture removed, or a playground with no kids in sight. It's all about creating that sense of isolation, that vibe of this place should be full, but it's not. Other times, editors add stuff that just doesn't belong, like you might see a boat in the middle of a forest or something. It's that surreal, dreamlike 
quality that really hits the liminal space sometimes. It makes you a double take, like what the hell is that doing here? Like the boat example is kind of stupid, but like you get what I mean. <laughs> What's cool about liminal space edits is how they play with your perception. They take these normal everyday places and turn them into scenes from a parallel universe or something. It's like stepping into a world that's just a bit different from ours. One that's kind of nostalgic, but also super creepy. And the best part is that anyone with a photo and some very minimal editing skills can dive into creating these. It's like open to anyone who wants to explore that eerie, weirdly beautiful side of things. Local bowling alley. All right, so we're looking at this picture of a local bowling alley and man, it's like straight out of a liminal space textbook. The lighting's all dim and eerie, giving off those old fluorescent vibes that just scream 90s or something. It's like time kind of froze in this place. The colors are all off too, like someone slapped a weird filter on reality. Everything sort of tinged in this yellowy green glow, which is totally not how you expect a bowling alley to look. It's got this dreamy, almost nightmarish quality, like you're looking at a scene from a movie where everything's about to go sideways. The place is deserted, no people, no sounds of pins crashing, nothing. It's just empty chairs and silence, which is wild because, you know, bowling alleys are usually all about the noise and the chaos, right? But this one is just stuck in silence, like a paused VHS tape. There's a sense of nostalgia too, but it's mixed with a sort of existential dread. It's like remembering good times but you're also kind of sad because those times are like long gone. It makes you want to cry, but you're not sure if it's because you miss those days or if it's because this picture is just so creepy. And look at that, like the lanes themselves, they just lead into darkness. They go on forever, but also nowhere at all. It's that perfect mixture of the familiar and the uncanny that just hits you in the feels and creeps you all at once. What the hell, right? This image is a trip. Local movie theaters. These places are like a gold mine for liminality when they're empty. Think about it. You're used to seeing them packed with people, the smell of popcorn in the air, the sound of trailers blaring from the speakers, but when it's empty, it's a whole different vibe. Walking into an empty theater is low-key spooky. The seats are all just there, waiting for an audience that isn't coming. The screen is this big blank face staring at you in the dark. It's like the theater is holding its breath, caught in this in-between moment before the show starts or after it's ended. And the silence, bro, the silence is deafening. It's so weird to be in a space that's designed for sound and spectacle, but it's just sitting there in hush mode. No laughter, no gasps, no crunching of snacks, just you and the echoes of what could be. Then you've got the aesthetics, like the carpet that's seen a million footsteps, but now doesn't have a single one, or the dim lights that sort of guide you down the aisle, giving the place this eerie liminal glow. It's like stepping into a still frame from a film where the pause button has been hit. These theaters, when they're empty, they're like the epitome of that canopsia feeling. They're spaces that feel frozen outside of time, like relics from a different era, especially the old ones that haven't been touched in a while. They're super nostalgic, but also kind of unsettling, like you're not supposed to be there without the crowd, you know? It's wild, the sort of stuff that gets you all introspective and stuff, thinking about the stories that unfold in the silence. Neon lights. They're like the pulse of liminal spaces when the sun dips out, right? You've got these signs that are all lit up with no one around to admire the glow. Kind of poetic, kind of sad. Neon is all about that buzz and color, painting the night with a vibe straight out of some old school arcade or a dive bar that's seen better days. It's weird because these lights are meant to be all inviting, screaming, hey, look at me, but in an empty street or a closed down shop. They're just kind of there, buzzing away to no one. And bro, the way they flicker on old motel signs or in the windows of an abandoned diner, that's straight up mood. It's like they're hanging on to the last bit of life in a place forgotten by time. Neon in these spots is like a neon ghost, shoddy. It's br- <laughs> Dude, why do I keep putting shoddy in my script, bro? I <laughs> this is in my script, hold on. Anyways, these lights in the quiet spots hit you with that what the hell kind of feeling. They're supposed to be all about energy and life, but when they're the only thing lighting up a place, they give off this eerie otherworldly vibe. It's like being in a movie where you're the star, but the rest of the cast didn't show up. Original Herobrine photograph. So this pic, original Herobrine photograph, got gamers losing their minds, right? Here's the lowdown. Minecraft, but make it haunted. You got this regular blocky world, trees, grass, all the usual jazz, but then out of nowhere, in the mist, there's this figure, Herobrine. Like, what the hell, bro? The whole Herobrine thing is a legend, Minecraft's own boogeyman. This photo is like the Zapruder film for gamers. It's blurry, it's got that could be nothing could be the biggest thing ever vibe, and it just screams liminal. It's the digital equivalent of an abandoned house at the end of the street where all the neighborhood kids swear they see things. And that fog, man, is doing all the heavy lifting here. It's like a veil between you and whatever hero Ryan is supposed to be. It gives it that perfect something's not right vibe. It's like the game world is one step away from normal and you're just waiting for it to snap back, but it doesn't. This screenshot is like the poster child for liminal spaces in gaming. Minecraft is this place where you're the master of your domain and then suddenly you're not alone. It's not just some mob, it's something else something that's not supposed to be there. It's got that mix of, nah, this can't be real, 
with, but what if it is? And that's the beauty of it. That's what makes the original here Ryan photo iconic because, because especially at the time when this like was taken and like posted, it kind of was a thing where it's like, is this actually real, you know? Overlook Hotel. I, so the Overlook Hotel from The Shining. Talk about a classic in the Hall of Fame for liminal spaces. Bro, this place is like the granddaddy of eerie, empty hallways that stretch on forever. That empty carpet that's all geometric and hypnotic and a vibe that's colder than the snow outside. The whole hotel is like a maze, right? It's got this vibe where every corner you turn could lead to somewhere new or loop you back to where you first started. It's a place stuck between the past and the present, dripping with a history that's soaked into every wall and every carpet fiber. The Overlook Hotel hotel is practically a character in itself, with its vast empty spaces that should be bustling with guests, but isn't. Instead, it's just Jack, his family, and whatever ghost decided to clock in. The hotel is like a snapshot of isolation, mixed with a heavy dose of... <laughs> nope. And those long shots of the hallways and rooms, man, they're just begging for something to happen. It's the silence and the expectancy that crank the liminal feeling up to 11. And it's not just about the space itself, it's about the waiting, the potential for something, anything to break the stillness. The Overlook's got that out of time feel, like you're not just cut off from the world by the snow, you're cut off by time itself. Those long silent moments in the hotel corridors, the grand but empty lobby, the ballroom that's just waiting for the next ghostly party. What the hell, it's like a liminal buffet, bruh. Pipe dreams. This is level two of the back rooms. This level is like the definition of a non-place turned up to 11. You've got these endless industrial mazes of pipes and damp yellowing walls that go on forever. What the hell is up with that? It's like every turn you take just leads you into more of the same. More pipes, more buzzing fluorescent lights, and the feeling like you're walking in circles. The vibe in pipe dreams is heavy, bro. The air feels thick and every echo through the pipes is like a whisper from the void. It's got that mix of claustrophobia and infinity which is a head trip for sure. It's liminality with a side of existential crisis. You're stuck in the guts of some giant, like some sleeping beast that's all metal and echoes. And the silence, bro, I mean, except for the distant drips and the hum of the lights, it's like a blanket over your senses. It's easy to imagine you hear footsteps or voices just out of sight, but when you get there, there's nothing. It messes with your head, shoddy. It's all about that feeling of anticipation, but nothing ever resolves. Okay, I kind of like the shoddy thing now. I don't know, that's like the third time I wrote it in the script. I don't know, I guess I thought it sounded cooler or something <laughs> but i'm sticking with it it's kind of it's kind of cool i don't know it's kind of aesthetic what do you guys think do, l l let me know in the comments if you guys think that me saying shoddy in my iceberg videos is aesthetic or not pipe dreams is like if an industrial complex and a labyrinth had a baby that didn't want you there it's not just a space it's a feeling it's the physical version of being lost in your own thoughts except those thoughts are made of concrete and rusted metal slope that game's like a trip through a liminal tunnel at warp speed you're just this ball rolling down an endless slope that feels like it's part of some neon drenched alternate reality. The whole thing with Slope is it's super simple but also kind of hypnotic. You've got these minimalist graphics that are all sleek and clean, but the longer you play, the more you feel like you're getting sucked into the screen. The world around you just fades away and it's just you, the ball, and the slope. It's like you're rolling through a liminal space is all about motion. Everywhere else, liminal spaces are usually still, quiet, and empty, but slope flips the script. It's full of movement, but still there's this feeling of isolation. Like you're the only thing alive in this trippy digital void. And bro, the way the game just keeps going faster and faster, it's like a metaphor for life or something. Like you're just trying to keep up dodging obstacles, rolling through this surreal landscape that's kind of familiar, but also not at all like the real world. Summer's almost over. Alright, peep this scene. Summer's almost over. It's got that late August vibe when the days are getting shorter and you can just feel the buzz of summer winding down. It's like the world is letting out a long sigh, you know? This image has got that eerie stillness that screams liminal space. You've got the empty twilight streets, the houses sitting quiet like they're holding their breath. And that shopping cart is like just, it's like it's been ditched all alone out there. Cause you expect to see it hustling around a grocery store, not chilling by the curb in suburbia. The lighting's all moody too, with the street lights just starting to do their thing and the sky painted in those dark twilight oranges and blacks. It's not quite day, not quite night, caught right in the middle. It's like time's frozen in this weird twilight zone. And the silence, man, is palpable. No kids yelling, no barbecues crackling, just the quiet of a neighborhood that's done with the day. It's got that feeling like something's about to happen, but everything's just paused, waiting. This pic nails that bittersweet end of summer feeling. It's nostalgic, kind of lonely, but also peaceful. It's that moment when you realize all the summer noise is fading out and the quiet of fall is creeping in. It's liminality with a side of melancholy, like saying goodbye to a friend you won't see for a while. 
What the hell is beautiful and kind of haunting at the same time? Taco Bell plus Bliss collab. Oh my gosh, I love this image. This is like a perfect liminal space to me. Okay, so I used to go on a bunch of road trips as a kid up to where my family is, which is up in the country, right? So it kind of looked like this and empty. And we'd stop at like fast food places, right? And this image here looks like what my brain would come up with when I'm trying to remember and put together memories of that. Oh my gosh, I can't describe enough my love for this image. Terror Hotel. Oh, Terror Hotel, that's another level of the back rooms. And bro, it is straight up nightmare fuel. It's like the Overlook Hotel went on a bad trip and decided to crank up the nope factor. This place ain't your average spooky hotel. No, shoddy, it's like every floor, every room has got its own brand of terror. The halls are amazed, the lights flicker like they're in on the horror, and there's this constant feeling like you're being watched. The carpets are all worn, the wallpaper's peeling off like it's trying to escape, and the air's got this musty stench that sticks to you like a bad memory. Every step you take is a gamble because right, you never know what's behind the next door. Could be nothing, could be your worst nightmare. The whole vibe of the Terror Hotel is suspense with a side of dread. It's like the building itself is alive and not in a cute Disney haunted mansion way. We're talking full-on whispers in the dark, something's breathing down your neck alive. And the silence in this place is not the peaceful kind. It's heavy, loaded with the echoes of screams that might have been or might still be coming. It's all about that feeling of anticipation. Like the hotel is just waiting to hit you with this best shot of horror. Wuzzleberg. Oh, Wuzzleberg from Wow Wow Wubzy. That is a nostalgia bomb straight to the childhood feels. This place with this bouncy, colorful vibe is a trip, but when you put on this liminal lenses, it gets a whole new layer of weird. So Wuzzleberg, right? It's this cutesy town where everything's all playful and the houses look like they're made out of candy or toys. During showtime, it's all giggles and adventures. But imagine Wuzzleberg when the cameras aren't rolling. Empty streets, silent kickety kickballs just laying there, and those wacky winding roads leading to who knows where. The thing is, Liminal spaces are all about the eerie stillness, and a deserted Wuzzleberg would be just that, a place that's supposed to be bustling with Wubsy and his pals suddenly all quiet and still. What the hell happened is when the fun stops and the colors don't seem so bright anymore. It's like during the day the place is a kiddie paradise, but as the sun dips and the cartoonish glow fades, Wuzzleberg could totally hit those uncanny vibes. It's like a playground after dusk. All echoes of laughter gone, and you half expect a bouncy ball to just start rolling on its own. Hey, that layer is over. Let's get into the next one called the school hallway. Come see my cat, Graffiti. This image is insane. This also gives that vibe of like nostalgic road trips for me, like going to the middle of nowhere with the bliss type windows background thing. But then it also reminds me of Gary's mod heavily with just like a random thing in the middle of a field. People need to stop arguing about what a liminal space is. Okay, so this is a Twitter thread. And by the way, I have a Twitter, you should go follow it. Anyways, this is just where it looks like people who don't understand liminality at all. Like people are saying, quote, people need to stop arguing about what a liminal space is. It's very simple. A liminal space is some chairs in a hallway. And quote, I'm on the liminal space subreddit and believe it is anything without a subject in the foreground. And I'm about to get elitist on these people, bro. <laughs> Angry Birds city background. Okay, I'm sorry guys, this one did not load for me. So, backrooms fan fiction. This is the whole wild concept where internet wojacks take the idea of the backrooms, the endless non-Euclidean space beyond the veneer of our reality, and they run wild with it. They're crafting stories and scenarios that go beyond just wandering endless yellow halls and nasty carpet. These stories, they dive into what it means to truly be lost in a space that defies all logic. Characters find themselves slipping through the cracks of the mundane. Like one minute you're at the office trying not to fall asleep at your desk, and the next, you're standing in a room that smells like old wet socks and looks like your grandma's living room if it hadn't been updated or cleaned since 1972. In Backrooms fanfiction, you've got all these levels and entities that aren't part of the actual like original lore. Writers are getting creative, inventing new rules, new fears, and sometimes even new hopes. Maybe someone finds a community hidden in a level that's perpetually stuck in a neon-soaked 80s arcade. Or they're running from a creature that's like if a shadow got tired of being all flat and decided to go 3D. The fans create diaries, logs, whole narratives about survival, escape, and sometimes the deeper horror of making the back rooms your new reality. It's about the human element. How do people cope, band together, or fall apart when the world as they know it peels away to reveal something so much more complex and unsettling? Baldi's Basics. This game's like a trip down a twisted memory lane to school, but it's all wrong. Baldi's Basics throws you into this low-budget, edutainment-style nightmare where you're just trying to collect notebooks and get the hell out. The thing is, it's got that Uncanny Valley thing going on with Baldi himself. A math teacher who's friendly one second and flipping his lid the next if you get a problem wrong. The halls are all empty and echoey and the graphics are so janky they loop right back to being creepy. It's like a liminal space because it's supposed to be like a school, but 
no school should make you feel this on edge, shoddy. I can't stop with this, bro. <laughs> Barnyard Game Barn. In this game, you've got this barn that's like party central for the animals when the humans aren't around. But strip away the party and imagine it empty. You've got a prime spot for some liminal vibes. It's a space that should be full of life. Cows playing pranks, pigs dancing, all that. But when it's silent, it's got a different feel. It's like walking into a club after hours. All the energy's gone, leaving behind a shell that feels kind of eerie now that the music has stopped. Corinthia Hotel. Bro, this place is like a scene straight out of a movie where the rapture happened and everybody just vanished. You're scrolling through the pics on Google, it's all sleek and modern, but there's this stillness that's eerie as hell. No bellhops, no guests, just empty chairs and silence. It's like the hotel's waiting for something to happen, but it's stuck in time. The hell, right? It's a liminal gold mine because it's got that like abandoned vibe while still looking like you could order some room service any minute now, except nobody would come. Oh, Dash Con. Oh man, Dashcon is like the epitome of expectation versus reality gone sideways. You've got this hyped up Tumblr convention that's supposed to be all community and memes, and then the reality hits and it's a desolate ball pit in an empty convention center. Talk about liminal. It's a space that was meant to be full of life and ended up being a monument to internet disappointment. The ball pit shoddy became the symbol of Dash dreams and the quiet after the storm of a failed fest. It's weirdly quiet, kinda sad, and just off in a way that's kinda hard to look away from. David Lynch. This dude, bro, he's like the king of liminal and surreal stuff. His whole vibe is like taking the mundane and twisting it until something's otherworldly. Think about Twin Peaks or Mulholland Drive, where the world is just a shade off from our own. His scenes are quiet in a way that's loud, if that makes sense. Like there's a buzz behind the silence, a sense that reality's got a tear in it and Lynch is just waiting for you to peek through. His work's all about that feeling of unease where every place feels like a threshold to somewhere you're not sure you want to go. Doge. He's gone, where did he go? I thought that was gonna be funny when I wrote the script, but now that I'm saying it, it's just kind of cringe. So, uh, <laughs> empty Kmart. Okay, so you guys know Kmart, right? Now get this, imagine it empty. No, but for real, this is really liminal. I love empty stores, which is why I love this next entry, Empty Sears. This is the same thing to a degree, but to me, these department stores are way more liminal than grocery stores and stuff. At least usually, this really gets me, bro. FNAF 2. Um, I already talked about Finance of Freddy's, so I'm not really sure what else to talk about here. It's just the same thing, kind of, in a way. And guys, trust me, I'm a FNAF fan, okay? I'm not being like a- I'm not being a loser here, okay? I'm a FNAF fan, but FNAF 2 is just- like, the gameplay is the exact same, pretty much. So, uh, yeah, very liminal still, though. Gabrielle Salonga. This is an artist who makes these really beautiful liminal inspired art pieces. Look at these, bro. Gibby. So apparently there is going to be a Gibby show and there is a really liminal photo of the set of it, even though it never aired. Very empty. Greatest freak out ever bedroom. Yo, this here is a liminal space. This is a space that is definitely liminal. Oh my gosh, bro. This reminds me of like my childhood house, but also my grandma's house, like, and the vintage vibe of the photo, bro. This one's just pretty perfect. It's a pile of balls. Okay, I don't know what this one is, bro. <laughs> it's just a video of a bunch of balls on the ground. Lego sets. Now here's the deal. Lego sets are all about creating worlds, right? But imagine this. An assembled set with no minifigures around. It's like a ghost town in block form. Imagine a pirate ship on the carpet sea with no crew, or a spaceship on the living room moon with no astronauts. It's playful and colorful, but it's also kind of lonely. Like, where did everybody go? And if you step on a piece, that's a whole other kind of horror, bro. It's a whole other kind of horror, shoddy. <laughs> Leith Water World. No way this is a real place. This is like the best of all the pool rooms I've ever seen, for real, and this one's actually real. Something about this, I can't explain it, but just look at it. The darkness in the background that pipes everything I've got it. Oh my gosh, bro. Lonely Supermarket. Okay, I gotta stop fangirling, but this is another perfect one. I can't even explain it exactly. Just look at this. The sky, the grass, the, well, Lonely Supermarket is a perfect angle. I love this. LSD Dream Emulator. This game, bro, is like if your weirdest dreams got a PlayStation release. You're wandering through a pixelated wonderland that's all kinds of a whack. One second you're walking through a chill landscape and bam, the next you're in a place with eyes on the wall staring into your soul. What the hell kind of trip is this? It's the definition of a liminal game, each level a doorway to a weirder and wilder place. It's nostalgia for a fever dream you can't even remember having. Nintendo 2DS Camera this dude took a picture of his room with his Nintendo 2DS camera, and bruh, it is hilariously like old time looking. Very nostalgic for me, I actually had 2DS. No players online. This picture is pretty great, but I think what it represents is so sweet and sultry. I really 
grew up with like no real life friends, mostly just online friends like this. And it really did hurt when any of them would just not be online. And especially, okay, I know I'm like extrapolating from the original post, but especially when they like stopped logging in, you know, it was like last seen online however many days ago, like dude, pool day. This definitely is a pool day. Again, I can't really describe why I love this. It's just so sweet. So innocent and bright and blameless. Roblox. Man, it's like a digital playground that's a liminal space gold mine. You've got these endless worlds created by users, but there's some that are empty and abandoned. It's like walking into a room where a party was supposed to happen, but no one showed up. What the hell, right? You've got these blocky landscapes and structures echoing with the ghosts of past players. It's weird because it's supposed to be all about interaction and creation, but when it's deserted, it feels like a digital ghost town. Like, bro, where'd everybody go? Staircases in the woods. Yo, talk about a Reddit rabbit hole. These staircases just chilling in the forest with no house in sight. Like, what? They're the ultimate, this shouldn't be here vibe. They feel like a glitch in the matrix or something. A level in a game that got deleted, but the devs forgot to take out the stairs. Climbing them feels like you're about to step into another dimension mention or just straight up vanish pure liminality shoddy it's like nature's own backrooms challenge talking tom alleyway bro let's get into this so you know talking tom the app where the cat mimics what you say picture this there's an alleyway in the game right it's like tom's own little quarter in a virtual city but strip away the cute cat and the fun interactions and what are you left with a digital alley this eerily quiet and just a bit too empty. The thing about this alley is it's meant to be a backdrop for Tom's antics, but on its own, it hits those liminal vibes hard. It's like any alleyway in any city, but it's also not. The graphics make it feel familiar yet off. The trash cans, the fire escape ladder, it's all standard, but where's the hustle and bustle of city life? Nowhere, bro. Just silence. Twister Room. Ever played Twister before? I remember I played at, I think, a Halloween or a Christmas party at my boy's house. Shout out Ganon. And I ripped my pants playing and it was really embarrassing. Um, yeah. Us 2019. Bro, this movie, straight up wild. Us is all about doppelgangers coming up from the underground to turn the world upside down. Talk about liminal. You've got the surface world, all beach houses and sunshine, and then the underground, which is like a shadowy, twisted mirror. It's eerie as hell. You're watching it and you're like, bro, what if I have got a twin out there with some giant scissors. It's got that vibe of crossing over from the familiar to the straight up bizarre. The whole movie feels like it's teetering on the edge of reality, like you're looking into a dark mirror and wondering what's staring back. View from the window at La Grasse. Whoa, apparently this was the first picture ever taken? Like ever? VR chat virtual worlds. VR chat's wild because you can hop into any kind of world, right? But the liminal worlds in VR chat? their next level. Imagine slipping on your headset and stepping into a space that's straight out of a dream or a nightmare. Empty streets, surreal landscapes that don't obey the laws of physics, rooms that loop back on themselves. It's like being inside a Salvador Dali painting that you can walk around in. The vibe's all sorts of off because these places should be bustling with avatars. But instead, it's just you, your digital self, wandering through these uncanny valleys. It's trippy, bro, like a virtual Alice in Wonderland minus the wonder. Wii Sports Bowling Alley. Wii Sports Bowling Alley, shoddy, it's nostalgia central. But picture it empty. No me's cheering you on, the alley's all quiet. The pin standing there like they're waiting for something that ain't coming. It's eerie because it's a piece of competition and noise, but strip that away and you've got this uncanny digital limbo. The screens are flashing, but there's no one to play. It's like the memory of fun times, but now all you've got is the ghost of that digital crowd and the game that goes on without players. What the hell, it's like a party where everyone just vanished, leaving behind just the echo of cheers and the rolling of a ball that's not there anymore. Worlds.com. Oh my gosh, this is insane. Look at this Reddit post. It says worlds.net is just the back rooms of the internet. And by the way, I am not advising you go there for safety reasons, but yeah, these pictures are super digital liminal. Level fun of the back rooms. Okay, so this level is like the ultimate twisted party scene. Think about an infinite room that's supposed to be all about celebrating, but instead, it's like a birthday party gone horribly wrong. The decor is minimalistic, with these oak tables that look like they came out of a sad cafeteria and cartoons on the walls that are drawn so bad it's almost creepy. The vibe here is like walking into a party where you're definitely not wanted. The clock ticking forever is like a soundtrack to your anxiety, and that slow version of happy birthday is like it's mocking you. Let's not even start on the party goers. These dudes are the real deal in creepiness. They used to call this place home, which makes it even more unnerving because that's what you're calling it right now. Imagine chilling at a party that just never ends. It's not fun. It's a trap. The party goers lurking around are just waiting for new guests to crash their forever party. It's a high risk level for a reason. You're not just dodging boredom, you're dodging entities that are anything but festive. Level of fun is liminal space because it's caught between being a place of celebration and a place of danger. It's like the party from hell where the guests are too twisted to leave and the birthday song never stops playing. It's a reminder that not all parties are about having a good time. Some are just about surviving until you can find the exit. 
what the hell, right? It's the whole mood of unnerving celebration. Snowden, Undertale. Man, it, this is that snowy little town that's all cozy, but also kind of off. It's quiet, but like, are you alone or are you being watched? The townsfolk are a bunch of monsters, but they're chill. It's like stepping into a place where everything's supposed to be scary, but ends up being kind of homely, which is a head trip. Walking through Snowden, you get this sense of being somewhere familiar, yet totally foreign. Especially if you're used to more, you know, human-centric towns. It's whimsical, but with an edge. Like, you're not quite sure if you're in a friendly RPG town or something out of a Tim Burton movie. Where's dad? Question mark. Where's dad? Okay, no, it's just this picture. Look, it's from the Pop Pap Papo. Papu Papu Te music video. <laughs> okay, so that is it for this video. This iceberg is so long, I'm gonna cover it in two videos. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Be on the lookout for the next one. It should be coming out pretty soon. I'm actually excited because I love Liminal Space, so see, yeah, I'll be covering the rest in the next video. So I hope you guys all have a great night and sleep well.